Hey guys, the Canucks are back in the playoffs for the first time since 2015. That means a home game at Rogers Arena. We're gonna do a deep dive into what's next for the team and what's ahead. But first, I just wanna ask you to please subscribe to this channel. I've dedicated a huge part of my life to hockey and was fortunate enough to play for over 14 years on some great teams in the NHL. I'm gonna be pouring all of my hockey knowledge into this channel and sharing with you some tips, tutorials, analysis, hot takes, and some epic guests. Please share and subscribe to help support the channel and let me know in the comments what type of content you'd like to see. Morrison, comes right under front. Morrison scores! Brendan Morrison, a silencer! Knocked down in front, Brendan Morrison scores! That is one great set of hands from Brendan Morrison. Morrison on Niedermeyer, back end, so he scores! So like I said, the Canucks are back in the playoffs. What exactly does that mean for the team? What does it mean for the city? First thoughts, I mean, awesome energy in the city, right? I mean, it's been nine years since the home playoff game was played and uh, the city is going to be buzzing. This city is going to be is starving for playoff hockey. So the excitement throughout the year has been building. You know, at the beginning of the year, it was interesting because I don't know if a lot of people were on board for this team to be a playoff team. That was a big question mark coming into the season. You know, a big change in management, um, bringing in a new head coach, uh, different personnel. There was a lot of questions about the Canucks. And I think if you go back and look at what the so-called experts had to say about this team, I don't think many of them picked them to be in, in this position. So they've gone out and had a tremendous year. Uh, management's done a good job. Uh, bringing in some key pieces, but I, I think the real key piece to all this has been Rick Tockett and his coaching staff. You have uh, Adam Foote, Sergey Gonchar, you have Daniel and Henrik Sedin. I mean, this coaching staff right now has the most combined experience out of any other coaching staff in the entire league. So having these guys behind the bench, on the ice, kind of imparting their knowledge and experience to this team is gonna pay a huge dividends so heading into the playoffs, I mean, there's still some questions that need to be answered. And, and I think, you know, the, the number one question at the top of the list is the health of, the, of Thatcher Demko. All right. I mean, here's a goaltender that's probably going to be a finalist for the Vesna Trophy. He's been one of the top goaltenders the entire season. You know, he's been out for a couple weeks now, a big part of the team. His injury has probably coincided with the team not playing their best hockey the past couple weeks. So... I mean, that's a major factor is him coming back healthy. And it would be ideal if he could get at least one or two games in before the playoffs start just to kind of get his rhythm back, get his feel back, you know, kind of get his mojo back. So that, that's a big question mark. Two, I think a big thing with this team is playoff experience, right? We, we talked about, okay, yes, they were in, some of these players were in the bubble, right, during the COVID year in Edmonton. But um, a lot of these guys weren't on this team then and, and, and don't have playoff experience. So, I mean, that's going to be a question mark. And, that, and I think really uh, that will be a factor depending on who they play in the first round. So, you know, moving forward, you're looking at matchups. Who, who, do, we, who do we want to match up? And, and, you know, no one would ever publicly come out from the organization or within the locker room and say, hey, we would rather play this team over that team because obviously that's, that's uh, bulletin board material. But I can tell you, that there's a high probability that they do not want to match up with the Vegas Golden Knights. And, and Vegas, you know, obviously are the defending Stanley Cup champions. Um, they've been to the Cup Final a couple years before that. So they have a pedigree of winning. They have a culture of winning. So even though uh, Vegas is in a wild card spot right now, and, and it looks like that's where they're going to end up, you know, if the Canucks can take care of business and, and, and hold off the Oilers who are trying to make a late push, for uh, the division title, then they'll have a good matchup, I think, with, with Nashville. But Nashville's been on a heater. I mean, they, they set a franchise record here over the past month. I think they had points in 17 straight games, which is phenomenal. But a lot of times after a team is on a 
huge trajectory on the way up and they're rolling, there always seems to be a little bit of a letdown. So, you know, maybe the Canucks can catch Nashville at a time where things aren't going exactly the way they're going right now. So uh, avoiding Vegas is key and, and getting a preferable matchup, which again, the team would never come out and talk about or say, but I think everyone would agree that Nashville is, is, a, is a preferable matchup over, um, over Vegas. So the mentality of a team at this time of year is, it's interesting because there's so much parity in the NHL right now and over the past few years. In the past, a lot of these positions were locked down. You knew exactly where you were going to finish. And, uh, you know, it would give some teams opportunities to rest guys if they wanted to rest guys. Um, you know, mentally as a player, you, you never take your foot off the gas. But, you know, maybe subconsciously, if you know you have a lead or this game tonight isn't super important or doesn't have any bearing on the standings or who we're going to play in the playoffs, that could creep into your mind a bit. But everything is so tight. Everything is so close. Guys are playing for positioning and, and they want favorable matchups. So, I mean, guys have pedal to the metal right, right till the end of the year. Um, but with that being said, I mean, the key thing is, is, is health, right? This is a time of year that everybody wants to be playing. Everybody wants to play in the playoffs. I mean, that's, that's a no brainer. That's why you play the game. I mean, it's the best time of the year, the energy, the excitement, just, uh, the Stanley cup. I mean, I just, it's every kid's dream that plays hockey is to um, be in a position to go after that trophy. So you play 82 games to be in this position and um, you want to make sure that your team is feeling good about itself and they're healthy going into the playoffs. Going into the playoffs, there's a lot of things I like about this Vancouver team and we'll touch on some right now. So I, I like their overall depth. I mean, they got four lines that can play. They don't really have to shelter anybody. They don't have to hide anybody really from matchups. Um, they're, they're, they have a huge improvement on the back end. You know, a couple of players that were added this year have, have uh, paid, huge, paid huge dividends. Um, you know, Cole's brought some great playoff experience. Susie's brought some experience as well. Obviously, Quinn Hughes is a front rider for the, uh, for the Norris Trophy. Um, other guys have stepped their game up. Goaltending. Goaltending is paramount. When you have a goalie that uh, gives you a chance to win every night, I mean, you're in every single game. So they, they have this. They have four depth. They have defensive depth. They have goaltending. I think statistically, they're, they're offensively, they're in the top 10 in the league. I think defensively, they're, they're in top 10 of the league. Uh, their power play has been pretty potent all year long. It's fallen off the last six weeks here. So I think they need to get back on, uh, on the horse with their power play. Because special teams play such a big role in the playoffs. And I do think their penalty killing needs to be a little bit better. So um, those are kind of the key, key points right now. Um, but depth is going to serve them well. And they've added an element of physicality as well. I mean, they're a team that can play multiple different ways. They got high end talent up front that can run and gun and score, which we all know is, is maybe not the most successful recipe in the playoffs a lot of times you're going to need you need guys to grind it out so they have that physical element as well which uh, will, will serve them in in a very positive way well there you have it guys please let me know in the comment section how far you think the Canucks are going to go or if there's any other content you want to discuss heading into the playoffs until then please like share and subscribe to this channel and let's have some fun with it <laughs>